In section 16.6, .6, we discuss parametric surfaces and their areas. We've already seen uh, parameterized curves. So a parametric function of one parameter say R of T determines a curve in space or in the plane. And this we've already studied. I set a parametric function we can state them as parametric functions, but here I stated it, and we've been stating them as vector functions. Parametric function would just be to list out x of t, y of t, z of t separately. So we will be stating these as vector functions. <clears throat> A vector function of two variables determines the surface. So here we need two parameters. <laughs> Again, I said parameters, I said variables, but uh, we will think of those variables as parameters now. And so the three functions would then be x as a function of u and v, y as a function of u and v, and z as a function of u and v. <clears throat> so In addition to sometimes being able to draw a sphere or a half dome, I can draw a water slide. <clears throat> so here's a surface and let's draw in a few what are called grid lines. So we could take uh, u to vary between u0 and u1 and v to vary between v0 and v1. And an important uh, thing to realize is that if you fix the value of one parameter, for instance, for fixed value of u, you then have, you're then back to a, a vector function of one parameter. You, at that point, for fixed u, only v is varying. And so, you then get curves and those curves are called grid lines. So let's just suppose that uh, this curve here is given by R of U zero V and that 
these grid lines or grid curves in this direction are each then given by R of U sub I V. So you get over here where you get R of U1 V. And then your grid, grid curves in the other direction, in this case, they're sort of uh, appear to be orthogonal, but that's not necessary. Uh, here you might then have uh, R of U comma V zero for, for this one and so forth. Then you'd have various grid curves going in the other direction. All right, so we'll, we'll see these grid curves in a couple of examples here. So that's all I wanna do for the rest of this lecture is show you, uh, discuss some examples. So how about R of UV equals cosine U, sine U, and V. Let's see if we can figure out what this surface uh, would look like. And a good way to, to get a sense of what the surface looks like without asking a graphing utility, uh, a computer algebra system to do it for us, is to think in terms of these grid curves or grid lines, which I've never wrote down. Okay, well, let's uh, let's think about for fixed V. So V determines uh, the Z component of this. So V determines a, uh, a plane really above the XY plane. So I'll, let's just say it, V determines a height, of course, could be below. Uh, I'll say a height above or below or on. <laughs> the reason it, the reason V by itself completely determines that is because V, uh, the Z component here is just V. V would still determine that even if it showed up over here. The, the main thing is that there's nothing that has to do with the heights, in other words, the Z value other than the value of V. Okay, but then what happens for each particular value of V? You then get a circle uh, of a unit circle at each height. just z equal v circle a unit circle centered uh, the z axis Really, it's that each unit circle will be centered at the point uh, zero, zero, Z equal to V. Okay, well then you let V vary and you get a cylinder, a circular cylinder. So this is a
So what we have here is then a circular cylinder centered along the z-axis. And I think I've probably already said enough for you to figure out what the grid lines are. If you fix, really here is a discussion of the grid lines. The grid, these unit circles, those are grid lines for fixed V. What are the grid lines for fixed U? I pause for you to think about that. U is an angle. U, U determines an angle in the XY plane. You then let V vary and you get these vertical lines that run parallel to the Z axis. So. All right, uh, a couple more examples here. Let's find a uh, vector function. that represents uh, the plane containing the point P0 and the non-parallel vectors A and B. All right, now it's just now occurring to me that I did not practice this ahead of time, so. But I've done it before. Don't try this at home without guidance. Okay, so. I need to <laughs> give some indication of a of a plane out here. And the plane has P0 in it. The plane also is parallel to vectors A and B. I could even draw, you know, A and B down here if I wanted to. Remember A and B can be moved around. So A can be moved, can be translated as long as I don't change the direction and then of course it looks like I'm bounding the plane, but that's not the idea. So here's A up in the plane and here's B. So the whole point, or the whole question is, how do we take an arbitrary point in the plane and represent that point with a vector function of two variables, two parameters? And the way you do that is 
by uh, adding the vectors a and b and getting getting to the arbitrary point from from here. So let's see. Let's call this point P. So let P be an arbitrary. Now, point in the plane. So what we need to do is add, <laughs> you know, th this is where uh, maybe I should have practiced this. Uh, we, I need to add multiples of these vectors here to get from P0, P1 to, to P. So yeah, I think that'll, Something like this. So to get from just making a slight uh, touch up there. To get from P0 to P, I need to do this, and then I need to do this. This is a scalar multiple of B, and let me make sure, and then this is a scalar multiple of A. So in my notes, I choose U times the vector A, and I choose V times the vector B. Just from the looks of, for this particular arbitrary point, ha, huh, um, it would look like I have to multiply B by a negative number so that I get going back in this, you know, the opposite direction. And then U would be a positive scalar. Uh, these parameters u and v, as for all of these, they're, they're all just real numbers, real scalar parameters. So, and by by adding p zero, so the the whole the whole thing, then you have to start by going from the origin to p zero. Which okay, there it is. So we first go from the origin to P0, then we go this multiple of B plus this multiple of A. So P, the point in the plane, is equal to 0 P0 plus U A plus V B. And that gets it for us because, uh, let's see, do I need, so I guess I could do one more. I could, could have said it like this because what we're getting, what we're getting by these resultant, by adding those vectors there is we're getting this vector here which is the vector from P0 to P. So that's what this is. This is the vector from zero to P plus the vector from, uh, I'm sorry, zero from the origin to P0 plus the vector from P0 to P. So then R of UV is then, so this one's just a constant. This is the vector x0, y0, c0 plus, 
and then u times the vector a1, a2, a3 plus v times the vector b1, b2, b3. So then the whole thing uh, could be cashed out in terms of the parametric functions if you want. If you want to see what those are, x of u of v is x0 plus u a1 plus v b1 y of u v is y zero plus u a two plus v b two and z of u v equals z zero plus u a three plus v b three. Okay. Was about to move on. What are the grid lines for a for this representation of a plane? If you fix if you fix a value of u, then as v varies, so for fixed value of u, you let v vary and you're just getting uh you're getting uh a line a line that's given by the direction vector of v so you're getting lines parallel to this to this vector here okay one more quick one a sphere of radius, say, four, centered at the origin. Uh, is given by a vector function of two parameters and this is something that we've already worked with. We've already worked with spherical coordinates. And so spherical coordinates are th three parameters. So if we fix the radius at four, then we just get, uh, you know, X equals four sine phi cosine theta, Y equals four, sine phi sine theta and z equals four cosine phi. So these are the parametric functions of the uh, parameterization R of, now see, I wanna say theta phi, rho phi, rho theta phi, eh, well, rho, it, what, it doesn't matter. All right, so the, the, you know, what you've earlier just regarded as variables are now just looked at as, as the two real parameters that determine a sphere. And you can even uh, here, so zero less than or equal to phi, less than or equal to uh, pi, and uh, zero less than or equal to theta less than or equal to two pi. And you can give part of a sphere by say, you know, restricting phi uh, to, to be, you know, not vary over the entire range here. Or if you want to restrict, restrict theta to not varying over its entire range, 
you could then get just a portion of a sphere. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do. Uh, we're now going to start applying all of this to coming up with uh, e more, more ways of thinking about the equation of a tangent plane to a surface at a point. And then also, you know, using integration techniques to come up with areas, surface areas.